I think it's 6 p.m. already. So yeah, we'll wait about some Thank little you. time, like one to two minutes, and we'll see how it goes. We would like to gather as much people as possible. <laughs> Okay, I think we can start. Mm. So, hello. Uh, I hope everyone can hear us. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Uh, so, my name is Rafael. Uh, I am Android developer working at NetGuru. Yeah, hello. Uh, I'm Piotr and I'm iOS developer working at NetGuru. Uh, as you can see, we are actually native devs. So, in our everyday work, we actually take care of the native apps written both, both in Java or Kotlin or Swift or Objective-C. Yeah. And, uh, but recently, we had the had occasion to uh, work over a project which, which was using a, a lot of native modules for the React Native. And together with Piot, we are uh, taking care of those uh, creating new ones. So uh, React Native on the page states that it will allow you to build a mobile apps using only JavaScript. And as it's most often true, there might be a moment when you won't be able to do that because some calls won't be available to you. Because, for example, because uh, React allows you most often to create only views and it doesn't provide you with much uh, close to the native APIs, for example, for Bluetooth and things like that. And if there aren't any native modules created by the community, you will be forced to create uh, one yourself. So React Native lets you build mobile apps using only JavaScript most often. Yes. Uh, so uh, going further, what makes React Native different from hybrid? multi-platforms like Cordova or Fonga is the fact that it uses actual actual native views to present data, not the web view. So um, but do, but by doing this, React Native tries to guarantee native feel of the application components used at the same time at the same like the in the native applications. So whenever the render function is used, it's uh, it's, just, it's actually presenting the, the native uh, elements on the screen in the, and in the view hierarchy. So let's say that, for example, we want to create a text, uh, hello world, in this case. So uh, what will happen, actually, we make a call to the JS wrapper, wrapper called text, and then it will make a call to the, uh, this wrapper. We make a call to the proper uh, native views. And in the Android, it will be the React text view, which is which extends the text view. So it's the same view that you would most often use for the as for the show for showing text in the native app. Yeah, and the for the iOS, uh, well, there is a RCT text view, which which, however, uh, it comes from the UI view, not the UI label or UI text view. So it comes from the UAV and it added some uh, text functionalities to it. Uh, as you can see, you could uh, also ex uh, expand that idea. For example, add here uh, something for the Windows phones. Yeah, and the React Native Bridge is an asynchronous, so the only way to pass a result to JavaScript is by using callbacks or emitting events. Uh, as we said, we are uh, all the time connected to the native code, so there is this thing called bridge to which we will be making all of them. Yeah, and as we can as you can see, there are three main uh, tra three threads in the React Native that are uh, present all the time, and it is the native modules thread on which we will execute the logic of the native modules. It is the main, uh, also, it is uh, making uh, layout calculations and, uh, and, and 
And we have the metret, which is uh, responsible for touching the views because as you know, or on the Android, you can't touch view, change its property on any other thread than in main. I think it's the same for the iOS. Yes, we cannot use, you can only use the main thread to display the data, to change it. To change it. Yeah, and uh, the last one thread is business logic written in JavaScript. So you have the idea of the uh, how React Native works. So we are going to present to you some. Yeah, and we'll tell you how how to create a custom module that will uh, be used in the React Native side. We'll tell you how to uh, write write them in the uh, both Android and iOS. And now Rafa will tell you how to do it on the Android. So uh, React provides us with access to the some classes that we can use to uh, expose our code, our code to the React Native. Uh, to export a simple method calls, uh, we use a React context-based Java module. Uh, in this class, we need to override a method uh, getName. Uh, name that we provide there, it's a string. Name that we provide there, it will be used to re reference or uh, native module in the JS. Also, uh, to provide a simple method called call, we just need to annotate with it with the React, me React method uh, annotation. Uh, the name of the method will be the same as the name we use in the native code. So, as you can see there, uh, yeah, uh, as you can see there, uh, we have a Wi-Fi state YouTube, which we are using to retrieve the, if we are connected to the Wi-Fi uh, to the network. Because let's say, for example, we want to provide uh, our user with the information that he shouldn't send a big file over the mobile network. So we need to check if he is connected to the Wi-Fi. And this module would allow, allow us to do that. And as we said, the React bridge is asynchronous, so we can't pass a met, uh, any result. Uh, so our method can't return any result, so it is void. Instead, we return all the data to the callbacks. So we make a call, check if we are connected to the Wi-Fi, and pass the result to the callback. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, for the Android part, we will need to provide a React package. Uh, in the React package, we are providing uh, every class that is used by our uh, whole module. And in this case, we have only the module class. So we provide here a singleton list with, our, uh, with instance of our module. Uh, next step is registering the, the, the package that we created a moment ago. And we do that in the main application class, which is created while you are uh, making new React, uh, uh, React app. So we are uh, making new instance of this package in the get package method and return that. Well, now I will tell you something about how to create such a module in the iOS. And to start with, we'll create uh, the Cocoa class in Objective-C and in the .h file, in the header file, we need to subclass the NS object and their RCT bridge module protocol. Then, if we will do this in the implementation file, uh, we will use the RCT export module macro. This will allow the JavaScript side to know that this class can be used uh, like a module there. Yeah. Um, and it is similar concept to this annotation that we had on the Android. Yes. Then we have, have another macro, which is called RCT export method. And then we place the method that will be visible on the React Native side here. It, its name is, is connected through Wi-Fi, and it has one argument. It's RCT response central block, uh, which we are calling, which we are 
calling it callback. And this, this block is actually an array of objects that will be passed to React Native side. And inside the method, we are just uh, creating a Wi-Fi state object and we are calling it is connected to Wi-Fi method. And we're using simple if else uh, conditions. We are simply putting uh, an object and pull object into the array uh, according to the Wi-Fi state. So this uh, object, yes or no, will be seen like a boolean in JavaScript. So it's pretty straightforward. Uh, and for the uh, Henrik, the object for uh, at the moment is how to create a simple custom module for both Android and iOS that will be simply visible in uh, React Native side. And now I, I, I'm talking about, yeah, <laughs> uh, and I'm talking about how to create this uh, iOS module. Uh, and as I told you, now we'll move to JavaScript side because each uh, native module has its corresponding index.js uh, file, which uh, handles the method calling for both platforms. So uh, what do you need to do there? We actually need to import the native modules. And in this case, the method calls are exactly the same for the both platforms because we just return a boolean in the callback. So we can make a simple choose depending on which we are platform on which platform we are right now. So if we are on the uh, iOS platform, we'll we'll use the native module called RN, RN Wi-Fi Stay. Yeah, and uh, this name was. Uh... Well, came from the name of the class, the iOS class. So it's the same name, and that's why we can just uh, use it here. And for the Android, we are using the Wi-Fi state model. It's actually the same name that we provided in the method getName. As I told you before, this will be used for the referencing or native model. And uh, as both cast all the same, so we are making a call through the native Wi-Fi state module and is connected to the free Wi-Fi passing, uh, passing the callback, which we return the blue. So the result after making a call will be uh, yeah. re returning a blue if we are connected through the Wi-Fi or if we are not. Yeah, so like, yeah like, as you can see uh, for the iOS, the simulator is connected to the Wi-Fi and the, the, the uh, other states that we are truly connected, and for the uh, Android, Android phone which is connected with mobile network data, the information is uh, also valid that we are not connected. Yeah, so you could see how, with a, a simple way, uh, um, create a uh, native module for React uh, application. And the steps that are need to be done are simply create a class for each corresponding platform uh, with some macros that are telling that we can, uh, we can ex uh, expose this uh, object to React Native and then creating corresponding uh, JavaScript file that uh, creating wrapper functions for those uh, React, uh, for those native modules. Yeah. And then now we will uh, move to another topic, which are custom views. Custom views, because as you know, sometimes we need to create a view uh, on the uh, on the native side, because uh, with the JavaScript sometimes it is impossible to use only the JavaScript uh, features to to provide some special uh, behaviors on the screen. Uh, uh, can we do the same in Swift or only Objective-C allows for bridging between JS? Well, um, you can do this with Swift, but in the end you will all, like, you can write code in Swift, but in the end you will all uh, have to uh, 
bridge it to Objective C, and then this code bridged in the Objective C will be visible uh, on the JavaScript side. So you can do this uh, starting with Swift, but in the end you will need to use Objective C also. So uh, our choose was uh, my choose was to use only Objective C to uh, minimize the usage, uh, the bridging and usage of Swift. Mm, I can add also that on dry Android you could use uh, Kotlin without any problems. <laughs> okay, so we are continuing the custom views on the Android. Uh, the concept is similar. Uh, we have again a class provided to from the React. Uh, in this case, it is the simple view manager. It is a generic class in which we provide what, uh, what view we will be uh, providing to the React. So, like before, we need to provide the name. This time it will be a name of the view that we will be referencing from the React. And we need to also provide an instance of our view, which will be created every time uh, we use our view in the React uh, render function. Uh, okay, sometimes we want to have a call uh, some call on the view, like for example, in this case we are creating a confetti terrain. So we want to start it. For example, if some event event happen, or we user uh, press the start button. So uh, there are two ways to do that. Uh, one of which is actually creating a separate uh, module, like we did before for the Wi-Fi state module. Uh, but in this case, uh, you will use the uh, UI manager to find the view through the tag that will be provided from the JS uh, that you can see there. Uh, and when we fight our view, uh, we can then actually make a proper call, call to the native uh, method of the view. So there is also another, another way, which is using comments. And Thanks to that, we don't create a separate uh, module from for just the native calls. Also, uh, we don't need to find our view every time. Instead, we have it provided in the receive comment method. So to use the comments, we need to create a map of those. Uh, so we need the name of the comment that will be used on uh, in the JS site and the comment ID we, uh, through which we will be referencing those calls in the receive comment. Uh, in the receive comment, we get the comment ID. Uh, so then we have create, we can create a proper if or switch uh, and make a call to the native uh, view method. As you can see, it is happening right there. Okay. Also, uh, sometimes we want to export uh, some property of the view. In our case, we want to make a confetti rain. So we could, for example, set proper colors from the React. So we pass them to the array. It will be an array of colors. Uh, we are also using the uh, custom type, uh, which uh, is provided in the React, allowing you to uh, transform the array of calls from the React uh, to the ints that we, that we will use on the native code. So we uh, get those colors and set those to the uh, native view. Also, we might want to like select the type of shapes that our confetti rain will consist of. Uh, on Android, you could use, for example, circle and rectangle. So we have different shapes. And similar concept. Uh, what is important? Uh, I didn't say that. Uh, as you can see, the React prop annotation also takes the uh, name uh, argument. Through this name, we will be making a call from the React. It will be actual the view property name. Uh, 
Uh, like before, we need to create a React package. This time, we are uh, creating the, only the view manager. Uh, if you would use the first method that I mentioned by using the tags to find the view, uh, you would also have to uh, register the uh, native module. So in the create native module, we would also provide an instance of this uh, module that makes calls to the native view methods. Uh, again, we are uh, registering this in the uh, get packages method. Yeah. Mm. Uh, I don't know. Maybe well, you're... I'm iOS developer and Rafael is Android. Yeah. So okay. I'm not which side is which uh, on your side. <laughs> mm. Okay. Okay, so now I will talk to you how to create a um, custom view on iOS. You know, there is this the same concept that will have like a uh, completely view. Uh, Piotr is writing something, so maybe we'll wait. No. Okay, so yes, this video will be on YouTube uh, like a day after, maybe. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, so for iOS, I decided to create an anon to uh, distinct the confetti type that will be displayed. So I needed to create a type that NS anon, which I named confetti type. I have uh, four types of confetti, and this is like header file for our view. Uh, it, this anon is created in a header file to be visible outside the, the view. Um, also, I created two methods, start and stop, that will uh, be used, uh, that will be used uh, uh, later. So, in the implementation file, we can see that we are creating one property, which is the actual confet uh, current confetti type that is being used within the view. Um, and we, in the view, we just have like an in instant type init method. And wh while the view is created, we're making some setup with the colors and so on. And uh, as you can see here, for the view, we are not calling the init with frame method because uh, the React Native handles all the background colors and the frame, the size of the view. So we can do this explicitly, but uh, as long as React Native can handle this, uh, we can leave it to them. So we have our confetti view implementation file, and now uh, there is a need to converted this enum to some no, no known objects to JavaScript. So we need to uh, uh, use the Aaron confet uh, type, like we are creating it. Uh, we need to implement this RCT convert uh, class. Uh, and mm, well, we are using this RCT enum converted macro to convert our confetti type to visible objects, uh, string string types to JavaScript side. As, and as you can see, we are creating uh, like the dictionary when on the left we are called naming the, the types and on the right we are uh, pointing the current type that will be connected with it with the name and on the on the very end we can um, suggest the default default value for this uh, type and we set it here for the diamond mm. yeah and then we we have the view we have the uh, anon conversion to javascript and now we need to create a view manager and there, there is a very important message that whenever you would like to uh, 
create, create a custom view, you have to have this view manager part of the name in, into the file. Because if you want to do this, it will not work. It's, it is something strange that it is not written anywhere with, a, with the documentation, but it's really important because we have, I had like three hours of thinking, what happened? <laughs> Why is it not working? Uh, and it had, it occurs that it was for the only name of the, the class. So uh, we need to extend the RCT view manager object in the in our header file, and in the implementation file we also has a RCT export module macro, which tells us that we are uh, that this module will be visible in the React Native side. And then we have this RCT view property. And this, like you see, it's confetti type, name of confetti type type. And this confetti type name is the same like this property here in the view class. And it's very important to keep those names the same because if you will not do this, uh, the application will crash because uh, we will not have the proper property to, to be set from the JavaScript side. So it's very important. And then there, are, there is one need that needs to be uh, fulfilled. Uh, we need to implement the view method that uh, returns UI view. And here we have our Aram confetti view. We are creating the, the object and I set the background color here to clear to clear color, but it could be done also from the JavaScript side if you would like to. And then we are returning the view. Uh, as the RCT confetti view is subclassing UI view, it's we are able to return it here. And then uh, last but not least, we have this RCT export method, and here we are. I am showing the stop method, and we are passing the uh, React tag uh, uh, parameter, and then uh, we we'll, we need to use uh, UI Manager instance block to find the proper view on the screen. Like the native part is displaying this view, this confetti view, but React Native needs to needs to know if the view is on the screen and it's doing this by uh, looking through the view hierarchy on uh, on the native side and for each view in the hierarchy there is a, a different react tag and here we are simply uh, mapping uh, the view add some tag to our confetti view and if the uh, conversion is successful we are simply calling uh, the method yeah and this will allow us to uh, perform and so action on the view yeah well uh, we have our uh, native side part when we uh, when we set the logic and the methods that can be used on the JavaScript side, and we are moving to how to wrap those methods in the JavaScript. So this time uh, we use like different methods for exporting the method because uh, Piotr used the uh, used the tags and the UI manager, and I used the comments. So it turns out that our uh, indexes will be uh, different, but it is not a problem. Uh, also, I have an, an additional uh, prop of the view, so you can you could also shape the color on the Android. So we create a separate index JS uh, classes. Uh, with different implementation to reference the uh, the start method that I provided through the comments map. Uh, you are using the UI manager here instead in the JS side, and there is a method dispatch view manager comment 
and we have access to all the comments exported from the native through the uh, confetti view in the UI manager and there is a comments uh, class that allows us to access them. Uh, this class extends the component uh, as this is a uh, React uh, view. So, and we provide a render function of this component. Yeah, because each component, when the class in JavaScript extends the component, it needs to implement the render function. Yeah. Uh, as I said, I, uh, in the annotation uh, I used before, uh, I said the name of the view props. So it was confetti colors and confetti shapes, and it is exactly the same name in this case. Yeah, and for the iOS part in JavaScript, uh, we also extend the component, and we have this static properties uh, object. And here, it is confetti type. It's the same thing like we had this our RN confetti uh, view manager class, and we had this export. Uh, we have this uh, view property confetti type here is the same is the same uh, property confetti type and we are just telling what type is it it's, it's type of prop types one of uh, four predefined types that we were we had in our uh, anon conversion and this one of uh, method tells us that we can choose only one type and the same type. And uh, yeah, we have our start and stop methods. And for the iOS, we have this uh, JavaScript method final handle, this, which uh, sends the tag of the view, and which then is checked on the view hierarchy. Uh, um, yeah. So <clears throat> this time we have two different index.js files. So we make a choice depending on which platform we are and uh, export the uh, RM config to use. So uh, to use this view, we have our uh, index file in which we are rendering for view. And as you can see in the render, we have the RM confetti. We have also our type, which is uh, which our confetti type, which is rect. And we also have to make a reference to this view, and we can make a, those calls to the uh, native code to start start the confetti or to stop the confetti. For example, on user uh, when user pressed something or when some event happened. So this would be the final result. We created a confetti view, which is working both on the Android and iOS. Uh, this example, uh, as you can see, it isn't like exactly the same because that's not what we wanted to achieve. Uh, Piot wrapped his own uh, implementation of the confetti. Yes, yes I've I written the implementation objective C. And I instead used the ready view available uh, on GitHub. So <clears throat> what we wanted to show that you can wrap uh, native views that are already available uh, with not much effort and have them available in the React. Uh, they don't have to be the same because actually they should be different. Different view, uh, views look different depending on the platform. On Android we have material design, on the iOS we have the... Uh, Apple guidelines. Yeah, so they should be different. Okay, so we showed how to uh, trade view. Maybe we'll talk about our experiences and something that struck us uh, while making the models. So each realm is fast, uh, both JS and the native, uh, but communication between between them comes with a price. And this is uh, actually could become problematic for you. Uh, if you want to send too many events through the bridge, like let's say you have some events happening real time and you get them in the JS, so you would want to render this on the view 
and this might be problematic for you as the bridge will get uh, too many events uh, some might even get lost and uh, so you should always think about that uh, Actually, the API is available in React, go in this way, like some animations uh, libraries, instead of saying every time, every second that the view should move, or every second is a big amount, it should be for every frame, so more, much more often. And so instead, we pass the whole description of the animation uh, that the native code would handle, and then make a proper call if you want to stop that animation or slow it down or change something. But we don't uh, send the uh, event to the native code every second coordinating this animation to the JS. Yeah, well, instead of just telling the uh, native side what the, what the native should do and how to do this, and then just uh, checking if everything goes well. Yeah, it's leaving the job to be done to native side. Okay, uh, also React, sometimes uh, you can see that React wins in the benchmarks and this is why, for example, creating a new view or switching to the next screen, it's, it might be faster in the React. Why you are creating the same view in the native and it is not so fast. So React is able to do some uh, magic uh, while re rendering the UI and it is actually using the Yoga, which is a library written by Facebook. Uh, what Yoga does, it is introduce the Flexbox model that might be similar, it is, it must be similar concept to the uh, front-end developers working with websites. And yeah, so this is what the React is uh, using in its implementation. And what is also what it is also able to do, it is able to flatten the layout. Uh, while you are creating a native app in the Android, you also need to uh, you should worry about like nesting the views in the groups. You shouldn't do that too often. You should keep them as flat as possible. And React is able to flatten those uh, for you. So instead of having like few nested liner layouts, it will bring that to just one layout. Also, it is able to recycle some views. And so let's say there was an image view, it disappeared from the screen, but soon it will appear back. It will be the same image view. And also what might be weird for us, like on the Android, uh, all the measuring of the layout happens on the main thread. But Yoga is using actually a separate uh, thread to delegate some work to it. So the main thread has uh, less work to do. Uh, yeah, that's some, something you get out of box on the React Native. Uh, there is also a library called Litio that you could use on the Android that brings similar features. Uh, to the native apps. Okay. Uh, pitfalls. So we are creating the native models, and well, there was a lot of surprises for us. Things were like weird. Something not expected happened for us. Uh, both because we are not, we were not uh, like working much too much with DJS or uh, because just React does some things different because for example it is using yoga, yoga, to, yoga to flatten the layout. So view, view sky. Uh, I had a big problem uh, when I created a view. Uh, it was a view rendering something in the real time but uh, I couldn't change the size of the views. So it was caused by the changed uh, way that Yoga handles the views. And there is an issue in the React, you might find the solution easily. But 
those are those two prices are, are, are awaiting for you in you might be shocked at the first time you might spend a lot of time uh, debugging what's the problem uh, i ended up exporting my view to the native code and well everything was working in there but i exported the same code to the react it stopped working so this is something you should take to account and something that you should think about while searching for the solutions uh, you should remember that modules are singleton. As I showed you earlier, uh, we are uh, making new instance of the modules in the application class. So we create one instance and it exists through the whole apply. So you shouldn't reference some uh, files or there is bigger sources to keep your memory clean. Uh, watch out how you name or objective C yeah, classes. This is something That's something can... that Kurt mentioned. Yeah, and uh, well, this comes with the another point like the documentation because as you know, like the React Native is uh, doesn't have any stable version like the official version, and the version comes every two weeks or four weeks, and there are some lack of documentation. And for example, for our case with this Objective C class name, we couldn't find a solution. Like we were searching, we were looking through different uh, examples for it, but we were, but we never spotted like that the view manager part of the name is the substantial thing that needs to be there. And we can we couldn't uh, even read about it anywhere. Like. It was in the documentation that class is named like this, but it wasn't uh, noticed that it's uh, that we need to keep this kind of naming conversion, like not naming the class manager itself, but the view manager. And for the pet documentation, there also are some uh, things that you know, Rafa will tell you. Uh, so. Uh, there is not much documentation uh, regarding the creation of the native modules. You won't have, find any info, for example, about the comments. Uh, actually, the best source of the information for me while creating modules was looking through the code of the React Native or looking through the code of the biggest uh, modules created by the community. And uh, I think that if you will be creating a native module, at some point you won't find some information in the documentation. And the best way, the best solution there is just look through the implementation uh, of the React or through, look on the implementation of the big libraries that are popular, have a lot of stuff. So you are sure that the QRT of this code like, should be pretty good there. <laughs> yeah. And, uh... What else is like, uh, what are more pitfalls like sending too many events through the bridge? That's like, like we said uh, earlier, yeah. the bridge is optimized to minimize the amount of information that is sent through it. And if we will send too many information that the bridge will not handle it and the application will slow down massively. And uh, that's, for us, pretty much all. Yeah, and there is uh, one thing that I will, I will mention that uh, there are some uh, custom modules, native modules that are written in the community, but sometimes their quality is not that uh, big, not that good. good. And also, some sometimes there is a thing that there is uh, some repository with a uh, module and the owner of the repository like it uh, left the repository and don't uh, merge that pull request so this is something that your application is using some uh, native module and then it has no support yet anymore so this is something that is also important like for the uh, react native yeah and now we are moving to the last part questions answer so if you uh, have any questions regarding our
presentation, please write it now. Or even regarding the modules creating and wrapping native code. Yeah, or you were interested in something and would like to have some further information. Okay, we are listening. Uh, okay, so the first question, how to convince one Android and one iOS developer who have bad experience with Cordova development to redo app using React Native? Uh, well, if you have uh, native developers, that's not a big shock, shock that they don't want to do that because that's like different technologies. They will be using DJS in the React uh, and they won't be uh, writing the native code a lot like we did in, in, uh, in our projects. And well, it might be hard to convince them. And it's also sometimes like, we shouldn't say that React Native is solutions to solution to everything. We still think that native apps have their place. So, it's sometimes hard to notice this border that you shouldn't cross and create the native app instead. Uh, if your app, for example, does a lot of like computation and it is more than simple post, get and delete on the backend, then I think it might be sometimes better idea to create a native app instead. Yes, and Henrik, I think that the, another uh, argument for this, like to convince native developers, is that Cordova is using, is like a hybrid technology and uses WebView to display all the data, whereas uh, React Native tries to use uh, native components to display it. And the, the usage and the thinking about the application that is written in React Native is different, like, for the hybrid technologies. So they will feel more comfortable with React Native, like the attitude to the development and how they can operate with, uh, with the components of uh, native applications and, and native SDKs. Okay, I hope that Okay. Uh, okay, but there is also this problem, like you have those modules and creating them, uh, it, it isn't like sometimes you will have some problems. Yes, they can help you do the native modules, but uh, you should always like, if you know that from the beginning that native modules will be like a higher percentage of the code than the React Native, then there is yeah. this border that we said that you shouldn't cross. Yeah, for example, so, you have like uh, 10 functionalities in your application and if Eight, like five or six or seven of them are connected with native modules and cannot be done within the JavaScript and or the React Native uh, implementations. You shouldn't. You should consider if if uh, using React Native is a good idea and then try to uh, go to native one because in the development process, like uh, it will go further and further with this amount of 
native modules, you will have to always support those modules and uh, update them if necessary. Uh, also, as you said, uh, I don't know what those model, what modules would be doing, but too, too much of the communication between them, uh, you can bring some performance issues. And what else? Uh, well, good example of the like crude app that is just creating data, say, sending it to the backend is like Instagram. It is actually using the React Native, but uh, it has native models for the camera, for example, but it is not their uh, uh, key feature to, key have, feature, yes. to use the camera. <laughs> okay, it's key feature of the Instagram to make a photo, but uh, it's not like uh the highest percentage of their code so it is just one functionality and actually you could make all this view native instead so react native does great jobs while creating ui but you should be worried at the moment you start the process the data because you you are in the javascript you can't create threads you are in the loop so that's something you should watch out for. Okay, uh, another question. I hope we answered. Uh, if not, read, read again on the chat. Uh, Shimon, why React Native apps on Android are sometimes so slow? Uh, yeah, it is a case. Uh, actually, the React Native works better on the iOS. Uh, it might be uh, caused by the fact that React uh, by the fact how uh, Android handles the memory, uh, because we have the garbage collector on the Android while uh, in the Objective-C. We have automatic reference counting. Yeah, we count just the references, so you uh, delete all the data while you are not uh, needing that, yeah? Yeah. While you just lost the reference. On Android, you will collect this data, and then the garbage collector counts, and it will try to delete all the data. And while, you, while using React, you will most likely create uh, more objects, so there will be more jobs for the uh, garbage collector. And what else? Well, React was first created for the iOS. Uh, the for support for Android was added later, so it is most likely just optimized better right now yes. because it was longer there. And that's for Pavel, uh, the answer for your question that... Uh, Have you written your application with Redux? If so, how difficult it is to shift your thinking from the typical modular architectural patterns? Uh, as you said, we are uh, native devs, so... <laughs> no, we didn't. We just created the modules for the... Uh, for the yeah. Uh, for the React Native apps. Uh, but, well, of course, I was looking through that code, so I think it might be hard to switch this thinking. Yeah, while to single using, state yeah, application. Yeah. But it's really nice and it's worth noticing, like this single state. And it could be useful, but there are some uh, tries to implement for iOS, like Red Swift. There is also for Android, yeah. yeah. And it's really nice at attitude to, to try to use it, but there is always the problem that uh, the SDKs provided by the Apple and the Google are not uh, created to use this kind of uh, architecture sometimes. And you need to uh, develop some solutions to use the UI kit, for example, in a good way. Yeah. But this shift, I don't think it would be easy. It would need some like, deeper thinking. Deeper thinking. Uh, okay, what kind of native module you have written yourself and are in production? Uh, okay, uh, I don't think we should talk about it. Yeah. yeah. There was some uh, processing of the live data and uh, and some views displaying this uh, data. That's what we can say. Yeah, we we were handling a lot of data with the, uh, our custom modules. Yeah. 
So this was also something that uh, striked us because we are at first trying to send all this data through the bridge, but it turned out the React Native don't like this. So if you go through any like presentations for the React, they mention that pretty often. So we had to switch our thinking, switch the way we post pass the data. Hmm. Yeah. So if anyone of you have uh, any questions, like please write it. If not, we'll slowly finish. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, that's a uh, good question. Good question. <laughs> okay, so for the for the very beginning, uh, if we see that there is uh, some uh, processing of the data, like lifetime data, like for audio or video, we are saying no. That, yeah. That the React Native is not prepared for it. Like for for the you current state, it will not be performant enough. And these are the those the cases that we are saying no. Also, I think it would be no, for example, if you want to communicate with some Bluetooth devices, like it would be the main feature of your app. Then it's like, no, we are doing this native. Uh, because, well, you, uh, you will depend on a lot of modules. Some might introduce the bugs, and you will call the native dev. Then you will need it, he will need to get uh, known to these uh, modules, uh, tries to fix those bugs. It's, it it would be like you would really lose your time. Yeah, so, and the money is the development process money. will be uh, longer than if we will you will go into uh, using React Native for. This kind of task, you will see that the, in the longer term of time, uh, it would be better to choose native development that uh, ensures your quality and under and better understanding of what is happening. Uh, okay, greetings, Shimon again. Uh, I think that garbage collector in JVM isn't only a reason for React slowness. Uh, yeah, it is like. Uh, it will, might be too much of the uh, communication between the bridge. It could be also like, uh, we don't know, React could introduce some memory leaks. Yeah, and it's also a pitfall that when you are compiling the React Native uh, to use it in your project, you see like 100 of warnings that something is uh, missing or unused or something that is also oh yeah that also need to consider. so I will come back maybe to this red flag questions uh, the Facebook app uh, they are actually creators of the React Native but the React Native isn't like used all the time in the Facebook and what could be the cause is the memory man management. Facebook uh, displays a lot of medias, videos, uh, images, the views are complicated. So while you are pulling the React to the uh, app, you are also introducing some memory overhead because there is uh, this JS running all the time and it needs additional dependencies in the memory. Yeah, we, we've written some uh, comparison 
your at Netgear about the yeah, there performance is, there for is both the iOS and React Native. Uh, I don't know if it will be about the React, but uh, yeah. webinars happens like I don't know. Maybe each month or each two months we are making uh, like this webinar. But if you are asking with if we are going to do like again another webinar, we can. But we need a good topic to talk about React Native. Mm -hmm. Uh, it depends I on how. What would you like to know? Uh, what the community would like to know. I think it's hot topic. So, <laughs> so yeah, we might think internally and ask the React Native devs for uh, some presentation. Yeah, not many. Not many people are doing like that. But we think that we shown that the it's not that hard to start making this custom this native modules to be used yeah we want we also went much into details but there is like this it's advanced stuff advanced task stuff that sometimes when you are developing the react app you won't even think about so yeah. and yeah we will discuss this internally in front of the react devs maybe yeah. that will be a next uh and we'll, I think we'll uh, release our uh, native modules to, to be public and to let other developers and people know how to create them and use them. So if you will, would like to know how they work and how they look like in details, we will uh, yeah, show them on the GitHub. Mm, OK. I guess the time's up, and we need to. Okay, we'll wait maybe 13 seconds again. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you have you have your last chance. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we need to finish. Okay. So yeah. thank you, everyone, thank for you. attending. Yeah, we hope you, you like it. And whenever you have any question after, you can just you can just uh, write to us on our emails. Uh, I will try to switch to the first slide. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If you would like so. to, to just. Please write an email for us and we'll answer. Okay, so thank you. Thank you very much for your attention and yeah, have a good day. Goodbye. <laughs>